hey, I'm back to do something. So we talked about Icarus last time, and I'm kind of just building on the same thing. So let's build it. This is the, the file itself. It's like Icarus expanded. This is like something I kind of wanted to do with the, the like that algorithm originally. And Icarus kind of found like its own feet as one particular image. And this is a little more abstract, a little more dynamic. Right now, what I have it running through is a lot slower. It's taking a single point that's white and just expanding until it hits something black. So it's got this like really unique way of finding interesting shapes. That is the basis of Icarus, but Icarus uses a bunch of different shapes inside. I only want to use one. I only want this fill the space. <laughs> so what's this? What this is doing at this point, it draws one of these, which are all going to be pretty unique, and then it picks a point somewhere and it expands to fill that image. And before it draws the next shape, we've got another image just like this, which is extremely helpful. <laughs> uh, and then we end up with a lot of shapes that are interesting, just like all going to be very different and they've still got those rough edges, like just a little bit of noise on the edge. So just like running you through very quickly how I do it. So I've got four layers. I did a terrible job of explaining this, so I'm here to correct myself. Our P layer is where we're drawing most of our drawing. Our C layer is where we draw that pattern in which shapes are found. So those black and white lines where we find cutouts, that's our C layer. The B layer is just there to provide those lines, those horizontal lines that you see, so we can superimpose them later on our P layer. Whenever there's a black pixel on the P layer, it shows as that same pixel from the B layer. And our C layer is just there to provide this texture. You can see it pretty easily in this darker blue color. Uh, it's just a bunch of overlapping low alpha shapes. So the first thing that we do, set everything up, background, set a density. That's how many cuts in our C layer we're cutting it all up into uh, so that kind of defines how large these shapes can become. Hit the slicer type uh, is what that split density falls into or carries on into this. So the slicer is just whatever shape we're drawing. In this case, we're just doing what I have badly named as the circle slicer, which is really just rounded rectangle. Then we'll fill, just choose our fill and the stroke weight for whichever shape we're about to draw. And we've got the same function here from Icarus, which is just a limited spreader. Uh, it's got a little noise around the edges. We'll set the phase and everything for that. And then we'll just set a point, expand until it hits black. That's it. The circle slicer, as you can see, incredibly simple. Uh, it is just rectangles drawn to however many. So that's our function right here. These B lines is the function I'm calling. Frame call is just the opposite of the background color. So we can even say that we want 50 lines instead of 200, make them a little more blocky, which is actually, I kind of love that. This whole piece kind of was meant to look like, I've seen so many people who do like cardboard, uh, they cut out like chunks of cardboard, paint them different colors, layer them over each other, just as little abstract compositions. This is meant to find those same like boxy, irregular shapes, layer them over top of each other. Uh, just nice, minimal, abstract art. And we can still show the fact that like these don't have to be vertical lines. I can actually go in here and let's do function wavy lines. All right, so I built this pretty simple wavy line function. Let's see what we can do with it. Let's see if it works. Perfect. It works as horizontal lines. Who would have thought? All right, and then we'll just offset. So sine i is something that I always use. Just a way to map our minimum and maximum from 0 to 1, 0 to 360. When the number of pixels is like 2,000 long, then we only have 2,000 to work with. We want to work with even factors of 360. So we'll map our x from 0 to width of 0 to goals, 0 to 360. And then we'll put our sine i in there, and then times however many waves we want. So num waves be here. And we'll actually just call that frequency because that's what frequency is. 2 and 10. And then our amplitude will be, we'll just call it cell height. Perfect, we've got waves. Let's do it. Uh, let's go ahead and take that isolation off. There we go. That's our uh, that's our wave happening. That honestly adds like another good layer of like dynamic movement because we've got curves, right? So we've got like straight lines, we've got curves, we've got these wonky little triangles and things popping out, but it still feels like it's got structure. 
those waves make it kind of feel like there's a lot more movement, a lot more organic wonkiness going on. So a random integer between like 20 and 100. Big, bold ones. Oh my god, that looks really cool. I think these being off-center kind of like is part of the charm to me, but I do want to like isolate so that they don't get to the very edge. Anywhere that's white, something can be drawn. So like what we'll probably do here is make sure that the C is the layer we're drawing it on. We'll make sure C starts as black. So C should be background black. And then we'll go ahead and do C dot rectangle. We'll do C dot fill. Wait, perfect. We can even go the extra mile here and say that we want the uh, the corners of this to curve the same way that like those inner shapes would value between zero and 200, just in case. All right, let's see what that did with us. I'm a big fan of this. Now we have like a good central shape. Ooh, those are sexy. Yeah, this is uh, this is good for me. So like on top of the, the waves and things, which are great and all, uh, I think we need to improve this texture a little bit because you can kind of see the fact that like this is a bunch of circles overlapping. There are a couple ways we could do this. One is just to keep layering more and more, but it's already taking like a good few seconds for this to render. And I have a problem. I have a history of pretty high render time. So what I'm going to do here is create a blob. And we're just going to make a polar shape with a noise value. We can cut down on render time by having fewer than 360 points. That should feel pretty good. I think it'll run faster as well. So if you don't know what I'm doing here, this is uh, something that God, I learned this from Coding Train. This is a good demonstration of a uh, polar noise or looping noise. So from the start of our circle, by the time that we get back, we're going to be at the same point. So we don't have this like weird jagged disconnection between the ends of our circle. So we'll just replace that right here. Yeah, it feels a lot nicer. It is still a little rough. Uh, and so we'll actually end up doing SQL M so that we can cut like a 10th of the render time there down. Only plotting a point every 10 degrees. That feels pretty good. And when we're back here, it feels really nice really like this. I think one thing that I would like to do is stack these so that there's always a larger shape in the background. So we'll actually change our split density so that it slowly gets smaller. So we'll map I from zero to num shapes and then from 15 to 50. That's really neat. <laughs> I love this. I would, hold on, we're gonna open up Figma. This is a super like wonderful plugin. Oh my God, that just like, that's perfect. Yes. So I'd love to do this just for the sake of visualizing like ultimately like the ultimate goal is like that my art is on a wall. So how does it feel in a space? Especially for abstract things like this where aesthetics are the guiding principle. There's nothing else to it. Um, we just want it to look great. Uh, so I just use Figma and the plugin is called Easy Mockup. It's like the only one. You just set a vector of four points and then it fills that perfectly. I love this. I'm a huge fan, especially this one. We're gonna have to just export that. All right, so as far as like small improvements go, this has been good. Um, I would love to try and record as I work on this more, um, but this is kind of like me dipping my toe into actually recording a little bit more often. Uh, I've streamed a bit, but those are usually just like kind of playing with little things. This, I kind of want to build this whole project on video. And I mean, like I've, I've recorded this a bit, but I do want to kind of see where I can take this. I'll get back around to this. I'll probably keep recording as I work on this particular project and uh, try to share with you guys. Maybe just try to share the project all the way from this, where it's kind of just made it out of concepting, to list it on FX Hash or whichever platform I can get it released on. So, uh, sweet. Bye. <laughs>